Okay, so recently I've been drawing a lot of, uh, I don't know, people, faces and stuff. That's actually kind of normal. Um, and I just, uh, you know, I get some kind of, we'd call inspirations or something to do uh, various things. I currently have two images open. I just left the other one over there. As you see with this full version, I'm not going to show you the other image, but you can have like multiple tabs open and be working on multiple images at the same time, which is kind of convenient. I have the pressure size thing set up here. That took me a while to figure out, and the GIMP doesn't uh, always work out, but as you see now, if I, if I go soft and pr press hard and then soft, I can get these varying uh, you know, line widths, which is good. It just makes it more natural. Even when you're using a pencil, if you push down harder, you get like thicker, grittier lines, and if you go light, the uh, both the opacity and the uh, the line thickness can change. So when you're sketching, that's important. Um, and so I just want to get in a uh, I don't know exactly what to call it, but like negative features uh, of a face. Often when you're trying to uh, draw people then you want to get into uh, you, you know you try and make them like Hollywood and attractive and stuff but sometimes what's art or what's what it is is what it is I guess is how you put it it's not always beautiful and perfect and you have to be able to draw different types of people they have wrinkles and scars and, and things like this they have names for a lot of these things too these things that come out of the side of uh, aging eyes or even young people can have these too. I think they call them crow's feet actually. Recently I heard someone say that. So here I'm just drawing uh, you know a person I guess in my imagination it'll be like a older worn kinda guy and I'm not necessarily imagining him to be uh, you know any stronger or better than anyone else just a strong character but uh, not physically powerful or anything, no kind of Superman or anything. So just, just to get something out, you have eyebrows here. And with this type of stuff, you have to remember a lot of details and things. Maybe he does have kind of a, a hook nose or whatever comes out of my line too. Because there's things with like, uh, maybe he has a crazy, I mean, erase that one. The crazy big nose that comes out like this comes in like that. I was looking at the uh, on YouTube. They have uh, uh, what's his name, Leonardo da Vinci, a uh, documentary, Leonardo da Vinci, and they were going through his sketchbook, which is one of his most interesting things that he left behind. Is uh, you know his daily notes on pretty much everything and including visual notes <clears throat> and he would draw like strange people he would see on the streets if you look at them these drawings they would look like uh, kinda like what do you call it modern day caricatures or something but in reality and this is something I kinda struggle with daily trying to explain to people even just for conversational purpose not for art but just regular you know, getting people to understand your viewpoint sometimes that people are always thinking that, well, you know, this is this is reality and these are people as I know them. And to get people to jump outside of their box and think outside of their own personal reality is not a easy thing to do sometimes. If you travel a lot and you've seen a lot of people and you look at real faces and deal with real people, it's not always this, you know, little society that you have with your family and your friends when you refer to uh, the common public it might actually be something a lot more different from reality actually <clears throat> so one of the things I like about this is that we can really dig into the face if I draw like a young person perfectly smooth and stuff they don't have all of these interesting features that you can draw you get into the lips here and you know a frowning face sometimes can be more interesting than uh, you know a perfect smiling face with no wrinkles and stuff like that. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more to 
you know, nitty gritty kind of stuff to get into here. Do that like that. Yeah. And it helps to develop some more skills, I believe, because you can focus on a lot more of the uh, the spacing, the what do you call it, the dimensions of things as you go around. Now, this guy could have a beard, maybe not. I don't know. That's that's interesting too when you draw. Another thing I notice when you're drawing like the difference between guys and girls is that I don't want to say girls are more simple to draw but you don't draw you don't spend as much time working on like the muscles you know if you're doing like a full body whatever superhero or something you have to go into a lot of detail for the male figure whereas a female it's not to say she's less complicated there's it might be even more complicated for some people to be able to get the, the finesse of the uh, female physique and her, uh, you know, the the elegance of the lines and stuff that make up the female body. But right here, you know, even, even as you can see here, or with a male body, there's so much more, I guess you can almost call it like architecture or something. There's so much more anatomy to consider with the uh, the detail and the, and the muscles. And assuming that he's, you know, of average average uh, fitness you have to draw like a six pack and all that stuff I don't even have a six pack myself but uh, I don't know if that would be considered average but Hollywood kind of thing normally expect to have some uh, a six pack and you know a chiseled jaw and maybe some facial hair it's a lot of extra features to work out so that's that and so you can see there with a very rough sketch within just uh, how long has it been already five minutes get something that looks like a face but you can keep going and going and going I don't know how long I've let this drag on for you still have the eyelashes to do here you can do that and go into the details of the eye and then for each and every wrinkle and not even just wrinkles but whatever you'd call them just every every feature you have to consider the lighting and shading things like that but it's true also just for the wrinkles now I start off with this crescent moon kind of thing for the pupil because I'm just leaving for the the fact there's probably a light somewhere there could also be a light over here too so you leave it like that it's even more realistic throw a bunch of stuff down some people might think it's crazy that I spend all this time sketching stuff out and then I just end up erasing it but you have to you have to know that the overall framework there is uh, the, the overall foundation of the drawing is correct before you can really get in there and do all the details because if later on you, you spend you'll waste more time if you draw all these details out and then later on you find out that the uh, the foundation that the, the fundamental shapes of things weren't wrong and then you have to erase all the details that you did that's even worse and just basically like do it from scratch <coughs> some people even when they're not that old they get these things that I guess would commonly be referred to as bags under their eyes and uh, <coughs> uh, can you put that this type of exercise has a lot of great things to be uh, drawn out of it one is that you can make a really strong character that when you look at them it's very defined that you know who this character is Sometimes if you're drawing characters for a comic, let's say you have a bunch of young guys. Let's say it's even a very well-known one like uh, Batman and 
and uh, Spider-Man and uh, get the X-Men out. And so a lot of these characters, they're like, basically they're young, white, healthy males. So considering they're not actual people, and you have to draw them over and over again in, in, in scenes together, what about when they're not in their costumes? Now when they're in their costumes, it's easy to say, oh, that one's Wolverine and, and that one's Superman, you know, because their costumes are so telling. But then later on, <clears throat> what if they're out of costume? Because, you know, they're not always in their costume. They're standing next to each other wearing teens, I mean, uh, jeans and uh, T-shirt. How can you How can you really differentiate them? If you go up, zoom into their faces because this particular scene that you're drawing might have to do with you know close up of their faces what are the exactly the exact distinguishable features between this young white male and that young white male so you make sure even when you're doing a close up of them that you you know that they're you know who's who and <clears throat> this this type of exercise helps to bring out some of that just loosen up a little and Think about the different features that people have. Uh, eye color is useful, but you might be doing a black and white comic or something like that. Maybe it's not even a comic, but you just want someone to be recognizable somehow. And so you have to think about these different features. Everyone should have different features. And especially if it's a comic book. That's why comics look kind of, you know comic -y sometimes is because you want to give all the each character some kind of unique distinguish distinguishable fe features that make them easy to uh, recognize number one so even if if I have some guy and I don't even put like three blades coming out of his fist but I just know it's Wolverine when I look at it because Wolverine his uh, his actual name, or it's not even maybe his real name, but the name that he goes by when he's not in costume is Logan, and he has a particular look. It's very strong uh, kind of look. I don't know how to put it exactly. It's almost like a cowboy kind of thing. It's just a, a rough kind of hardened American look, but not not very old. <clears throat> so this is not what I'm drawing now. I'm just drawing some random guy, but I'm just saying that's a perfect ex example of where you really got some good features and some good use out of uh, out of the character when you can draw them out of costume and still recognize them. Whereas say Spider-Man for example who is uh, Peter Parker if you draw Peter Parker out of costume and just put him on a picture it's not on a comic book and show to everyone they'll say who's that? There's nothing really distinguishable about him. He's just kind of a regular young kid. Superman, on the other hand, even he's the uh, Clark Kent. Even when he's not in costume and flying around, he does have a distinguishable, quite a few distinguishable features. He's extremely uh, tris chiseled jaw and a very prominent uh, a chin. A chin that pops out very far in a certain way, and. Uh, his shoulders are extremely broad so even you could even see somebody maybe working in New York City and they're wearing a, a particular kind of gray uh, business suit and they look like a reporter and if they happen to be like you know very strong and have very broad shoulders and a prominent chin like that you say oh that guy looks like Superman even without having a costume on so all of these things come from uh, focusing on the the features of the face and knowing you know when to draw the line and when to exaggerate a lot of it has to do with exaggeration I guess that's that character there do some more as you get old this guy's supposed to look old and as you get older you want to understand the anatomy of the face a little too you have there's a bunch of muscles for the mouth you could you kind of like uh, simplify it by saying it, it's something that goes around here like that. If you look at like look at a monkey, it's very obvious and prominent. They have this big, you know, part of the mouth that pops out in the front, and the nose right here, like that. 
Well, that's also still in a human. They have this part here, but it's kind of uh, blended into the face. When you get older, that part might start to sag a little bit. You have a dimple comes down here. Not everybody, but normally this is where your chin is, and it would be just bone here. This part will shrivel up sometimes when you're making a, a sour face of, of uh, you know, on your chin. That part of the skin might sh shrivel up and make kind of like wrinkles inside here. But normally this, there's, I don't think there's any muscle in here. It's just a bone. It's a chin. And then these muscles in here stop and they connect to the bone right about here. So you, you could have, you know, something coming down like this, the shading like that. The upper lip normally, not always, but normally will sink in a little bit. And so if there's lighting in an ordinary place, like coming from the sky or coming from a light above, then you would you would just see it mostly on the bottom lip. The top would be shaded like that. Now obviously I overdid this because yeah, it makes it look like it has black lips. But that's the general idea, just to make this one, the top lip, look a little darker. <coughs> yeah, he doesn't look happy at all, does he? Nope, not happy. And then, recently I like to go for a sort of uh, noir kind of look. If you don't know noir, you should look it up. It's I believe it's a French word, and it's used to describe a very sharp black and white kind of art. So you have very dark black shadows and very bright light whites. So it's basically like Hollywood lighting. So you can get something like that. It helps bring out a lot of the shape of the objects. And again, it just adds more fun to the uh, to the drawing itself. With a noir kind of effect, it's almost as if to say, the more there is to draw, the better. The more details, the better. The more shade, the better. The light's coming from up there, then I can make a cast shadow from his nose here. Like this. And do this side of the face in a little. A little reflective light left behind here. That's about that. <clears throat> keep meaning to do this beard over here. I keep getting sidetracked. I was drawing some guy's beard the other day from a photo, and I noticed the hair will come up this way sometimes. It's kind of normal. Well, depending on how hairy of a person you are, some people just don't even grow beards. <clears throat> and then the weird thing was, like, on the side, the hair would start moving this way as if it was growing forward. So there's patterns. And then in the front obviously it kind of comes down like this. And you can use that for shading too. So I do a little bit more on the bottom edges here. And I think his eyebrows kind of ended up inside. I make white eyebrows here. Maybe he's kind of gray haired. And when you get older, your eyebrows get more bushy. You stick out a little like that. Doesn't mean we don't need some texture in there. And a little bit of this. Just very doesn't look happy at all, does he? <clears throat> look at that mouth. So I really went to town on that one. I can lighten that up a little. Let's go like this. You 
go yeah just like that might be a little better and that's about that it's kind of all I wanted to do really it was just you know, hit on all those weird little features of a you know oddball character just make something up <clears throat> and you could do just as much with a female character it could be you know older woman or uh, even a young girl who just has some exaggerated features not necessarily you know if she's young it's not really going to be wrinkles and stuff like that but she'll still have her own everyone has around different features some shading around here in the eyes yeah that's about that and throw a neck in there you'd have a prominent Adam's apple I don't know why, but Adam's apples seem to have like lines that go around them like that. <clears throat> Doesn't need to be that exaggerated, though. They got a bigger brush. <coughs> Get the shadow under here. Then we have a eraser like this, put it down pretty small, and you can erase some lines like this is a nice little technique. And I hope to show that the beard's coming out under there in that dark spot, wherever there's dark spots. Because that, they'll just hit the light in between the, the arc where the, the light is turning into shadow. See how that brings out that bearded effect down there? It's actually it's something that happens in uh, real life <clears throat> just trying to show this muscle there's a neck muscle that comes down the side and this part got a little too dirty I want it to be a little sloppy leave something for the imagination Deer, 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 deer. and that's it do the hair real quick and we'll call it finished feeling about done now you see with the hair it can use much bigger brush strokes just to get the general idea in there again the hair is going to be flowing in different ways You just start off with these kind of big brush strokes in the hair and then go in and do little ones for detail. But it's okay to use the bigger ones because there's so much hair in your head, it goes into clumps and stuff. Look again, I'm gonna use the eraser and pull out pull out some of these parts in the in the extra dark spots so that it just you know, it helps to separate those little spots like that. It's a bit more realistic. Alright, that's it for this one. Would have been nice if I didn't crop his head off but that was just for fun a real quick uh, study on some facial features and uh, you know maybe an example how you can make something beautiful that doesn't always have to be some young perfect kind of person uh, not to say this is beautiful but maybe it's interesting and pleasing to the eye in some way of course I should flip it around look for some mistakes you know, this is unnecessary here maybe a little bit of this And I'll be about done with that. Good enough. Yep. Okay. That's it for this one. See you next time. Bye-bye.